Welcome to Creative Spaces, the podcast by Aurelex. We'll be talking to famous and not so famous people about their surrounding environment, how it influences the creative process. We're joining us. You got walls and a roof. What? Intense, smooth, tough, dark, sexy, intelligent. These are words that describe things in a world. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. In a world of voices and actors and voice actors, one stands alone. It's probably not this one. Hey everyone, this is Kevin Booth and Rob Wenner. In today's episode of the Creative Spaces podcast, we're talking to voiceover artist Jeff Bell. Jeff Bell began his broadcast career in 1983 at a small town radio station. He rode the radio circuit through Shreveport, Dallas, Miami, Chicago, and Milwaukee before transitioning to full-time voiceover. Since then, you've undoubtedly heard his voice on tons of Ford commercials, along with Power Nation on Spike and CBS, Wendy's, Sea Ray, Kennedy Space Center, Six Flags, Aaron's, Snapper, Sport Clips, Mav TV, Gillette Plus TV, and radio stations around the world. Jeff, thanks for joining us on Creative Spaces. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. How did you get started in radio broadcasting and, and what drew you to that initially? Well, uh, like I know, <clears throat> I think Rob is also a band nerd. So I was a band nerd in high school for part <laughs> of my high school career. So I've always been drawn to music. And um, I was kind of just a wandering soul after high school. And, and we had moved to this uh, remote place in Arkansas. Well, there was an ad in the paper for disc jockeys. They were looking for people to, to um, work part-time at the radio station or something. And so I went and applied and talked to the guy. He heard my voice and recognized there was something there. And then he also had a broadcast school that he was doing for like a few months. He'd come in a couple nights a week. After the radio, it was a daytime radio station, so they'd shut it down. Then you could use the studios at night to practice. So that's where I kind of learned the ropes of production and all that stuff. And then uh, immediately just started looking for opportunities and sending out tapes and moving around the country. What you aware you... of voiceover work potentially in the in your, when you first got started, or is that something you moved into? I you know I had no idea that any of this stuff was a career field at all when I started. I didn't. It never occurred to me that being a disc jockey was a job if that makes sense you know like a job you could do right so yeah. that all just kind of came in that in that instant when i was like suddenly in a radio station and recognized that i was good at this this was a thing for me so yeah i had never i had no direction no life plans nothing <laughs> <at all. laughs> he fell backwards goal. into this thing exactly right <laughs> and, and you play in bands throughout the period too or played music always i played music always but i lived in s small towns and rural places and i didn't really have bandmates very often to, hmm. i couldn't really find cats to play with you know hmm. so i never really was in yeah. like official bands or anything until after i got into radio and started my own stuff <laughs> you know hmm. um so position to voiceover from broadcasting was it was it gradual or did it change with technology? It, all of that. So I was, <clears throat> I was on the air for 18 years. And in my last few years, I started uh, doing imaging for radio stations around the country. So those kind of overlapped. So I had, I had my full-time job on the radio and I was doing radio imaging and occasional commercial stuff at home. Uh, we set up the home studio in 1997, opened my voiceover business at the first of 98. And then I didn't leave the radio station until the first of 2001. So there was a bit of a transition there where I was able to sort of build the business while having a gig, which was important. And that's good. That's and good. then um, mm -hmm. after they bounced me out of there, I already had enough income to just keep pursuing that. And it really, and then I, I immediately scored the agent in Milwaukee who led me to the Ford job. So my first Ford job came right after I got the ax from radio. 
hmm. which was super lucky. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, I just kind of busted my ass for a year or so, a couple of years, um, just, you know, hand to mouth, you know, dollar holler things. And then um, the Ford stuff really kicked in big time. Yeah, that's really set the stage for everything else, right? That's that's going big. Super lucky, yeah. <laughs> in the voiceover world. Yeah. <clears throat> Those are great commercials, too. I love that video where you're um, kind of trying to squeeze all that in in the disclaimers, you know? <laughs> I tell you, load the time. It's half a second. It really shows the art and the difficulty of getting that done. Well, and those are old radio skills because back in the day, it was tape and it was it was an analog clock on the wall, and you wait for the second hand to come to the top, and then you hit record and you race through all that and you mix it while you read it and all that stuff had to be done straight to tape, you know. So, and that's kind of the interesting thing about the way Ford behaves is when we cut stuff, it's we behave as though we're cutting to tape. Hmm. We don't, you know, come back and edit later. They make me hit it. 29 and a half. You got to hit it. Wow. <laughs> you know I mean? Wow. Yeah. Every time. So, uh, 60. It's got to be, you know, 59. Mm -hmm. So um, it's all those old radio skills day in and day out that help with that work. Cool. Cool. It, it, is there any one voiceover artist or, or voice that you kind of used as inspiration or just developed your own voice throughout? Or? Um, I think that you kind of pull a little bit from everybody. The guy, the first guy that, that put this idea in my head was Joe Kelly, who later became my friend. And my second radio station we hired Joe Kelly of Super Spots out of Chicago hmm. to be our station imaging voice. And that would have been like 1984. And from then on, I'm like, yeah, that's what I want to be hmm. if I grow up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I Go ahead. have a couple of agents, uh, two or three agents that um, – send auditions and that kind of stuff. I have a management team and then I have agents that send various auditions. So I, I basically try to get a lot of my work from auditions. I enjoy the challenge of doing auditions and, you know, trying different things. Otherwise you end up just doing the same bark and growl stuff all the time, you know? <laughs> so it's kind of interesting to mm -hmm. at least challenge yourself in the auditions, you know, for something new. Yeah, another one that uh, people may recognize uh, your voice from is the Liberty Mutual commercial, right? It's on your Facebook page. That's a very interesting one, kind of showing the the outtakes. Was that natural? Was that planned? You know, the funny thing about that commercial is that I was the last element put into that. And it wasn't the audition I did didn't really match what we ended up doing. But the direction during the session brought us to that sort of king kong you know the mouth doesn't match the words <laughs> vibe. and that happened during the session so that turned out to be really a, more interesting than the audition when we got into the session but yeah that's just a lucky spot because the, the actor kid that guy he killed it you know I'm nothing in that spot <laughs> yeah. that guy killed funny. it <laughs> it's funny Man, that commercial's on all the time, too. That's, I don't that's watch awesome. much TV, but I hear that it's on, and I yeah. still get checks. So that's, that's there it enough. is. There's the, <laughs> there's the ka <-ching. laughs> That's what I care about, really. <laughs> yeah. um, you're working with one um, room that you've kind of done some videos in. In those videos, you're constantly making changes, it seems, or or changes in the room and the way it sounds. Um is that true? And you're just constantly working on it, well, tweaking, I, tuning the space. This is I, while I got you guys here. This is where I'm going to turn the tables on you and ask you guys some questions because I think that, especially with with COVID and everyone sort of having to develop their own home studios now, mm -hmm. I don't think people necessarily know how to listen. So what happens with me, like when I added these panels to the ceiling in the booth? I was, I was listening for months, and I was getting this sort of buildup, this low end buildup in here. I'm like, there's some reflections going on, and it's, it's building. So it, it's not 
offensive. It sounds good right now, but it would just start kind of whomp mm. at the end of words. So I'm like, there's some reflection. So I got these ceiling panels in. That all went away. But what I want to ask you guys, um, and I know, Rob, you're a teacher. Maybe you can help explain. How do you listen for a reflection? Because it's like the sound after the sound. But how do you teach someone to listen for those reflections? You're like when you're trying to tune your studio. That seems like a extra skill in the ear. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're. It is. It is. And one of the things that. Yeah. Go ahead, Rob. I was going to say. I mean, that's 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 part of. Um trying you know recognizing that you do have a problem in the room and um we always say that the purest sound is that you'll ever hear is if you stick your head right in front of your monitor you know that's going to be the best sound as soon as you move out of that um and the sound populates into the space that's where you have to start looking around and listening and just kind of analyzing it better in your you know even if you're not sure what it is, the problem, you know, what, what it is you're listening for, you can definitely hear there's something going on. So, you know, um, how do you, but how do you determine what the reflection sound is? Because it's such a subtle thing, like the sound after the sound. Yeah. And we, yeah. And scenario, uh, we, we consult people every day, right, on how to do that based on best practices and reflections and things like that. Sometimes it still comes down to the room and the geometry of the room and being in the room. Some... Right. Interesting. Because I, I know that that's a big problem. A lot of people not really understanding what to listen for. And even sometimes, you know, I've got a little tinnitus. I've been under headphones a long time. Hmm. So sometimes it's like hard to spot where I'm hearing the reflection or how to treat it, you know. Yeah. yeah. One of the one of the advantages of portable treatment, we started making portable treatment that you can move around. I think one of the advantages or something I noticed right away for that is help to train your ear by moving it around and find out what it does. Right. Right. So that's same as move the microphone in recording to get the best sound versus EQing, uh, move it around the room to find out, you know, where it's absorbing and how that makes changes to the room uh, is probably the best way to get started with that. Cool. And then you guys tell me again about your service because you have a service that you do um, that, for the room treatments. This form, work? yeah, yeah called form PRAP, Nashville. personalized room analysis form. Yeah, so you just go online and fill in the details of your room and upload some pictures. Pictures are great because they give us an opportunity to look at the space as well as dimensions. Um, and we start to look at it from there. Combined with information about your equipment, what you're using, are you using a subwoofer or no? How big is the room? Um, you know, if a room is is less than 14 and a half feet, well, 80 hertz sound wave is is 14 and a half feet for it to develop one time. So that's going to oh. revolve. That's going to build up back into the room more. You listen to the track more low end coming into the space, you know. So those kind of things that we factor in. Um, and then we send you back a drawing suggestions of, of what you should do with the room. Okay. Cool. Very cool. And, and the same would be for, yeah, for a voiceover space or something like that. We can do the same thing there. A lot of the trouble that I've had, and I think a lot of people are having, is is less in treating the space than is keeping other sound out of the space, mm -hmm. which yeah. is very difficult. I had mm -hmm. some really good luck with that uh, mass-loaded vinyl yeah. in the my sheet control block. room. I really yeah. like that. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's that, and that's also a bit of a confusing thing to some people is that they look at absorption you know panels or, or our studio foam or something like that that that's sound proofing but that's not it's controlling the sound of what's within the room right. uh sound proofing involves uh you know involves construction and trying to eliminate sound transferring out of the room and back into the room and, you know i always explain it to people you know if you fill the room with water you know, and all the you find you see places where all the water is going out. That's where sound is going, also. So, um, you know, you very have to, expensive way. Uh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it, it can get a little. <laughs> yeah, and the sheep, the sheep block, black, dense. Um, 
poly material that just blocks 27 dB flat out. Of course, it's different across different frequencies, but for the most part, 27 dB, it just stops it. Well, there are some sounds... Um, that combined with it, that you can build in the wall. Some sounds are just not going to be kept out, like the Coast Guard helicopter that went by earlier. That one's... You're not keeping that up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if, if you build... If, if, if you can, you know, if people have the ability to build a room within a room, then you are able to eliminate that. I mean, I've been in a lot of studios that are in the flight path of, you know, airports or whatever, and you sit there and go, why in the world? Who thought this was going to be a good idea? But if it's built right... right if it's built the right way, um, you can't, you know, you can't eliminate that. Well, I had a commercial space here. I had one in Nashville, but I yeah. also had one down here in Florida. And it had 10-foot ceilings, and I had a booth inside it. Mm -hmm. And it was right across the street from the fire department. None of that stuff would get in. Awesome. Just having that extra room in the room. Yep. This, the room yep. in my house... The ceiling's right here, mm -hmm. leads right to the outside, and there's just not really any way to stop that travel for with the low yeah in the room with the, and yeah stuff. room within a room scenario. You're basically decoupling that room from the other wall from the other space. You know, right. um, preventing anytime uh, that structure touches the other structure, um, it, it vibrates through that vibrates through the drywall through the framing through the ceiling all those vibrations carry through and they make it make their way out so if you build a room within a room that isn't actually is decoupled from and not touching that outer wall um combined with the outer you know the the absorptive material and decouple out to prevent those vibrations from going through or coming in um so what is your signal chain then uh, your audio for your voice. my voiceover i use a u87 through a manly vox box and that yeah, that's all you need really that's everything i have a uh, aurora lynx 16 for my io and a ssl controller hmm. the new ps2 controller for cool. my control room but basically what you're getting is uh straight out of the manly and the u87 and all that grease Awesome. I have a in the control yeah. room when you see me doing the videos in the control room I'm using the 416 the Sennheiser mm -hmm. and that seems to work really well in there but I don't enjoy it for voiceover because I move my head so much mm -hmm. when I deliver but when I'm using it sort of at a distance in there the 416 sounds fine and they, and they have a similar sound my ear doesn't care for the 416 it's you know it's what everyone sort of in the industry uses that are u87 but the 416 just doesn't have it has a hollowness to me to my mm -hmm. ear so mm -hmm. i'm into the big diaphragm and the big tubes <laughs> <laughs> how how long did it take you yeah. to how long did it take you to decide or realize that the 87 was the best mic for your voice. I mean, was there a whole, was there a process you had to go through to you know, try a bunch of different types of mics or? My know? first mic was a Neumann TLM-193. Mm -hmm. So my buddy had one of those. I used that and mm -hmm. I'm like, that's a good mic. That's one I can afford. So I, that was my first mic for the first few years. And then I don't even think you could go to Guitar Center and try one out back in the day. Yeah. I just ordered one. I just, I knew that was the thing. So <laughs> I just probably not, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're like, I just want a Neumann. Well, I <laughs> yeah, love the I can Neumann remember recording at Richness. studios and now. Yeah. But, and then when I recorded my first yeah. record, I sang through a U47 and that is a sick mic. Yeah. Just sick. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's tempting to get one of those, but I don't like to leave those tube mics hot all day. No. They seem to get a little fussy. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Right. You have to Good treat point. them. Treat them nicely. So, yeah, and a standard broadcast mic like an SM7B is a great mic. We wouldn't capture the red chest that, that the, the U87 well, does. And the U87 with the big diaphragm allows me to really move a lot. And then it also sort of, you know, absorbs this, this sound that sort of rumbles off my chest. And I feel like some of those other mics mm -hmm. don't hear all that, mm -hmm. you know, like growl, that gnarly stuff that 
pays the bills, man. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that kind of leads to my thought to a couple of your videos, one of which, you know, the videos that are really supportive of the voiceover community in an instructive way. Um, so one of which is about the Wolfer and the tweeter and your chest voice and your, and your head voice and using those. That is a technique that I sort of developed for myself about 25 years ago. And I've been doing it ever since. So I was, <laughs> I was living in Milwaukee and I, I noticed that, yeah, hey there, everybody kind of has that Wisconsin accent. <laughs> yeah, and I sure. thought, you know, maybe it's cause their nose was stopped up half the freaking year. <laughs> and I thought, you know, maybe if I learned to speak with my nose stopped up, I could avoid all that crap. So I, <laughs> that's what prompted that. Jeez, head, yeah. <laughs> Like, I, I don't want to pick that up, and I'm going to catch a cold a couple times a winter, so I learned to learn how to talk on the radio without my nose. So I started doing that and then realized that you get this huge resonance in your chest, and um, it sort of multiplies the resonance because it's in the larger chamber of your body. So it went from just being a, sort of a gag to avoid picking up a local accent to just this way of achieving a, a different level of depth you know awesome yeah hey there yeah <laughs> and then i so over the course of the years i've taught that technique to you know a half a dozen ten people or people i meet along the way and i have heard them change i've heard the effect it has on them hmm. and and the resonance and the depth and just the warmth that it brought and so I've, you know, and in fact, just last night I was talking to a friend who said she was explaining this technique to someone else. And then two days later, that video came out and she just shared it with them. So this is a thing that I think people don't realize how your body works. And it's a discovery that I made. So it's not some mm -hmm. special technique I invented or I discovered this about my body. And that seems like a perfect thing to share, yeah. you know, with others. Like, this is how your body works. Get to know your body. A lot of voiceover is sort of biofeedback and learning how to trick your body into doing these gags, you know. It's not, it's not normal to talk like this. Mm -hmm. I'm a <laughs> if someone walked up to you on the street, you'd be like, dude, get the fuck away from me. You're troubling me. But, you know, I don't, I don't know. Movie trailer, you're like, yeah, bring it on there. <laughs> you know, yeah. if I came up yeah. to you like this on the street, you'd want to get away from me. But sometimes it'll sell you a truck. I don't yeah. know why that works. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Well, and the timing. There's another video about tempo and metronome and timing. Um, I found that one really interesting because I found myself kind of ghost tapping out the intro as I try for this show. <laughs> Um, it just really helps. <laughs> well, that's, you know, when you're doing a lot of different speeds and auditions and, and takes and things, you don't really have a reference point. And I notice when I do the Ford commercials, as we go, I seem to get a little more excited. So it's a lot like sprinting. When you do a 30 second read, top to bottom, you're, you take in big air. You read a little bit, you grab more air, read, grab, read, grab, and you're really working your lungs and your body. So at the end of it, you're kind of exhausted and winded, you know? And um, so you're using your, your air management the same way you would as a singer. So I, I start to notice all the same mm -hmm. things apply uh, musically. The difference for, uh, in and reading a commercial and reading a song is that in a commercial all the lyrics are right in the intro mm -hmm. <laughs> you know it's about the same number mm -hmm. of words would be in a song you just have to say them all right at the beginning you know <laughs> <laughs> so you end up <laughs> managing your air in a similar way that you would as a singer mm -hmm. so i just because i spend so much time singing and playing music and stuff i notice these similarities and pull them together Cool. Yeah. Uh, and beyond those things, do you have any advice for aspiring voiceover artists or current, you know, voiceover talent? You know, there's so much instruction out there. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I'd had to make all this up from whole cloth. I'm in the middle of the woods just talking to myself in a room, you know, so 
I just had to invent myself along the way, but there's so much instruction now. There are great instructors. You can do it just like the zoom on the internet, that kind of thing. Um, and, the, and acting classes because that the industry is moving more toward acting mm-hmm. than announcing. And I'm just like a standard announcer type mm-hmm. of guy. And, you know, my pipes have just become this gnarly thing, which normal people don't sound like. So I sound like an announcer all the time, you know. (laughs) But um, I think the more you can develop your acting chops, the more opportunity you'll have and study things, you know, like video games and stuff. There's a lot of opportunity for non-announcer, like, you know, acting type of chops Hmm. in voiceover. Have you done much audio Well, that makes sense. You do do have to... No, I was gonna say, have you done much recording for audio audio books and things like that at all? I'm not really into the audio book thing because it takes forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it is a time I'm a short consuming. Guy. I have a very short attention span. <laughs> 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 I get I get a little iffy in the last ten seconds of a sixty second spot. I might just <laughs> bail out. I mean, it's tough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good for 45 seconds, really. I can stay with you that long. It's good to know your limitations then, I guess, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so just being like doing hours. And I tried to read a pamphlet once. <laughs> I'm like, no way am I sitting here for 18 pages of this. Oh, man. <laughs> Too fidgety for that. <laughs> the dreaded training manual. <laughs> Exactly right. I never get anything from manuals. Any, I don't understand. I can't clean information from manuals. <laughs> uh, Kevin, I, sorry, I cut you off. Yeah, give me a quick how-to tutorial on video. You, the engineer cut me out. Yeah, I cut you off. Sorry. Uh, since you work from, yeah, since you work from your own studio, COVID probably hasn't changed much for you in terms of work it's changed what i eat <laughs> i have to deal with my own cooking now so <laughs> i miss the restaurants I'd like to get back to that as soon as possible <laughs> that's also my yeah. social life going to restaurants you know yeah. but um I just over a year ago i moved my i built this booth in my house and moved out of the office space and back into my house so i had readjusted to you know the being in isolation most of the time and and a lot of my work comes from both coasts so i have auditions first thing in the morning and then auditions come in late in the day mm-hmm. uh, even six and eight o'clock at night so you know i don't really get too far from the studio there's and then lockdown <laughs> you know, what do you gotta do <laughs> it's not that different really yeah yeah <laughs> right the, you know is what, there something the, else the interesting? Work, or? The work slowed down for everybody. And, uh, you know, just like oh, people it? that were laid off, it was quiet. There wasn't any work to do, but mm-hmm. I was, you know, hanging around the house with all my toys and stuff. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> but have you, have you noticed the work starting to pick up a little bit now? Yeah, you know, I do a lot of Ford commercials, and it's tough to sell cars when you can't invite people in. Mm-hmm. So I've seen a little, we're doing a little bit of, of advertising around the holidays and things for that. But, um, you know, for the most part, it's it's really hard to invite people to come to your store. You know, we're re- yeah. sort of opened up here in Florida, so people are getting out a little more, unfortunately. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just, I think it's been slow for, other than, and I didn't get a lot of these touchy feely COVID spots. So I don't know. A lot of people were doing those, but yeah, I don't know. I guess they didn't want a bulldozer for that kind of gig. <laughs> <laughs> we're sorry. You don't feel so good. I guess. <laughs> Stay in your house. Exactly. That's what they needed to run. Well, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> if you come out, you deal with me. <laughs> there, that's there's the spot right there. There's the spot. <laughs> the voice of COVID nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, there, Kevin. No, you're fine. Um, you know the 
the mowing of the neighborhood just started too. Oh, of course, God. great time. <laughs> we can talk about sound isolation. Moved into this house without the expectation of really having a studio, so I'm kind of in the back sunroom, um, which is cool for a place to play good music, but for a proper studio, not so much. So are you so guys? I might sort have to change of, that. Do you guys work from home normally? I do. Yeah, I've been in home. Not normally, no. Yeah. Okay normally and i was usually off day i'm working remote now kind of used to traveling a little bit too mm -hmm. i think we've met once years ago at at nam or something yeah i think so. um so i get the you know i could work from home i had to have those abilities to work remote you know but yeah we've been we've been home uh most of this time I show up to the office a couple times to catch up and do some things but yeah. all right wow Horrible They're pandemic. starting apparently to open up some voiceover studios in New York City. Oh, really? But not in LA. So some people are going. I've I've always worked from home. Right. I've maybe done a half dozen sessions in my life outside of my house um, when I was traveling that kind of stuff. But uh, you know, apparently other people get invited outside of their homes. <laughs> uh, I kind of have been lucky enough to have this Ford gig where. You know, they could call me right now and I'm ready to go. Cool. So that's the kind of situation we have. And, you know, they used to give me 24 hours notice. Now they'll be like, what you doing? Right. right. <laughs> you know, you... so that works out great. It keeps <laughs> and, me whole. And you, know? and you got to be ready to go. You can't. Exactly. You know, yeah. So, yeah. And, it's, and I know just from seeing your previous studio, you're just, you're, you're set up and you are ready to go. I mean, that's right. the gears ready to go um the room's ready to go you're ready to go so real important yeah that's how i keep it set up and fired up in the morning and just ready to rock all day long cool cool whether they want me or not <laughs> <laughs> is there something else interesting or unexpected about you that people don't know about um I don't think I'm that interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it's kind of a whole stunt that I did in Nashville. Um, that was kind of an epic stunt, that whole studio, the, mm -hmm. the guitar strap company, bitch straps. This, uh, the bitch straps was evolved out of just a, I learned leather craft when I was in sixth grade. And then I never did it again until I was like 40. And I went and bought all this stuff to do leather tooling. And that's when I sort of invented these guitar straps. And I'm like, you know, these aren't on the market. There's nothing like sexy leather guitar straps. So I went ahead and did that whole ordeal. And the marketplace was not interested, by the way. <laughs> so <laughs> if you need a piece of nice leather, I can set you up. But um, it was really a fun adventure, you know, and I got to meet like, I got to meet everyone in the music merchandising industry. Uh, you just got involved in, uh, you know, with the Chamber of Commerce and all that stuff in Nashville. So it was a great adventure. There you go. I still you have my stick bag. <laughs> the hi-hat holster. Yeah, the hi-hat holster with <laughs> the tag it. on it. Awesome. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I love those things. Yeah, so that all just started, you know, making fun, <clears throat> making fun leather stuff. And then I thought other people should have fun leather stuff, too. I was wrong about that, but I thought that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't know until you try. Now that now that you mention it, now that you mention it, maybe we'll re reach an audience of people who want fine leather stuff right now. <laughs> well, it's in storage. Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to throw away a bunch of nice leather stuff. Yeah. Here. Yeah but yeah. I am dragging it around with me now. Of, of completed pieces or, or raw product to make stuff? Uh, there's still a bunch of raw product at the factory up in Tennessee. <laughs> Sherry would like to get rid of that. But um, I have completed stuff. I have, like, finished product here. Wow. So I think that that yeah. stunt might be the most interesting foray in my life. <laughs> and is that your Mustang that's on your well, web page? I Yes, that is my Mustang. <laughs> I still have that one. A beautiful car. 68. Cool. It's an awesome car. Uh, is that all stock? It, what did I do? I added um, electronic ignition, and it's got 65 wheels on it. 
but it's got like 62,000 miles. Whoa. That's like a sweet car. Oh, man. It was a family car, a California car. Wow. Handed down, and the guy who really? flipped it to me bought it from the grandson. So it just was in two families now so far. Cool. Pretty fun car. Very cool. Wow. Congrats. That's great. Um, so you moved from Nashville to Florida. Do you have any wild Floridian man stories that we... You know, the opportunities to become Florida man are so plentiful that I don't leave the house. <laughs> it's just too easy. <laughs> I've been in the paper before, man. I'm not going to go back. Let's not do that again. <laughs> it's, it's a crazy world and temptation is everywhere. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Well, folks can find Jeff Bell voiceover on Facebook, Instagram, right? YouTube. Um, YouTube. You're really active on LinkedIn, I'm too. I'm very active on LinkedIn. I like LinkedIn a lot because there's less uh, vitriol, it seems like. <clears throat> so I'm trying to focus on that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but I'm I'm all over the interweb. Yeah, and an opportunity to be supportive. Of, yeah. Um, what do you have coming up? I have no Anything plan to ever help promote or talk about life. it. Never again. <laughs> <laughs> I literally have nothing scheduled in my life right now. That's a sad thing. Well, but I think it's true. It's kind of <laughs> yeah, kind of a a global thing at the moment. I think. Yeah, that is I guess going. the truth. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I'm doing today. It's coming up. That's about the only thing of interest going on here. So. <laughs> is it is it the week? No, thing? you know, there's not much to do during a pandemic, and I am in an epicenter of it. Yeah. So it's really troubling to go mm -hmm. outside at all. You know. Yeah. yeah. And it's also it's just yeah. like jungle humid today, just deadly humid. So you don't want to be out there. <laughs> Does that does the weather yeah. affect your voice? I don't know. Um, <clears throat> I feel like sometimes <clears throat> the humidity makes me want to clear my throat. Right. <clears throat> and I do think, excuse me, and I do think that sometimes the dryness in the winter can affect it. Okay. But my my voice in particular is pretty bulletproof i don't really have allergies and i sing like a wild man every morning i just throttle my pipes every day <clears throat> because i enjoy that and i figure if i'm able to sing for an hour i can do voiceover all day mm -hmm. with, you know no harm no foul so um the things things that do affect my voice is eating mm -hmm. And sometimes it's, I can tell right now I'm clearing my throat a lot because the humidity is built up in my booth. So the humidity can kind of stick to my throat a little bit. Mm -hmm. But when I eat, um, sometimes it affects my throat. But what it really impacts, I think, is my stomach. And if there's anything in my stomach, it's harder for me to really relax my abdomen and get to these super low gnarly notes. Mm -hmm. So I tend to not eat during the day. Mm. I've been doing that since I was a kid. I did afternoons a lot. <laughs> so, you got to keep your pipes till seven o'clock, you know. And then also back in the radio days, I was kind of poor a lot, so yeah. you know, yeah. kind of cut down on those meals out of necessity. Maybe do a trade out for a pizza once yeah. in a while. And stuff alive, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, vocal coaches will products that you know that you can't eat kind of leaves you with nothing leaves you with room temperature water uh i love coffee so i drink coffee all day mm -hmm. which is probably not advisable but <laughs> whatever <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so that's kind of my method i just keep I keep a lot of coffee and water and and then i just trash my pipes every morning and then sometimes if i'm if i'm coming into a session or maybe i'm a little nervous or i just don't feel quite right i'll go pick up a guitar and sing a couple of songs and just blow it out just wear it out hmm. and it kind of relaxes me and i don't feel so stressed you know and i know that my pipes are going to hold up hmm. so cool yeah i kind of i run them hard you know mm -hmm. i mean I think, and sometimes we'll be in sessions and people are like oh we don't want to ruin wreck your pipes or wear you out and like 
more likely my body's going to wear out before my voice. <laughs> <laughs> All that barking, man, that'll hurt your stomach and oh yeah, wow. tighten up your whole body, you know? Wow. Oh, I got a, I got a question yeah. for you. That Super 55 light in the back corner of the other room. The giant. Where'd you get that? <laughs> so I had um, a buddy in Nashville who is a carpenter. His girlfriend was in working on her record in my studio. And so we're talking. I'm like, man, I'd like to have a cabinet that kind of looked like a 57. Like, or I mean, a, a 55S. So I got out the 55S and I showed it. He took a picture and all this. And I'm like, yeah, okay, just make it look a little bit. Just a little cabinet. This guy's crazier than me. <clears throat> I don't know what happened, but he decided to make this crazy thing. <clears throat> so this thing is like made of MDF. And that's all CNC'd out to look like this microphone. I swear to God, this thing weighs 200 pounds. Wow. Unbelievably wow. heavy. So I just threw this idea out there, not even thinking you could get anywhere near this kind of madness. And then this is what he came up with. And it's like <laughs> automotive paint on it and LED lights. And it's just <laughs> fantastic. But I yeah, truly... It's incredible. Uh, defy you to pick the thing up, man. It's just <laughs> ugly, ugly heavy. <laughs> That's awesome. So, yeah, that wow. was, and then I had that because I wanted it for a showpiece in the studio, but it took him so long to make that I closed the studio before he even got it done. Oh, wow. So, luckily, I, I have the video of life that uh, people can take a look at it. So, there is a video of it online, too. Cool. all the mics and stuff but that's how that whole thing happened because i have ideas and i express them and often that's a mistake <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, no, no. well it really adds to the look of the room and i think you know the look of the room is really cool. the room that you have there is really cool that combined with the gear and the acoustics it all just brings it together don't you think I think you got to have a cool vibe in your studio. You know, I think that, so for me, I, my first studio I was ever in was a radio studio. And it it feels like when you enter these hallowed grounds, these special places, all the rules of life are kind of off and you have to be a little bit extreme and a little bit off the hook. And that's how I feel like you should, be how you should feel when you enter a studio you should feel like you are free to experiment to do whatever to try whatever you want without fear so that you can get the the most out of your time there so that's mm -hmm. why i like to have a great vibe where you feel like you can just sink in and, and be comfortable and and hang you know yeah, hundred percent agree. I've been to some studios where it kind of feels like a doctor's office. It's very corporate feeling, it's and that's clinical. not the right way to go. Yeah, it doesn't seem to. It doesn't yeah. seem to promote sort of wildness. I guess is what how I would yeah. think of it. Yeah, or it's kind of like disheveled and messy, and then you're like, "Well, that's not my mess, and I can't bring myself into this." You know, right. so it's got to be a nice place for you to walk in, put your stuff down, and get started. Right. Yeah, and I spend yeah. every day in there, so I like yeah. to keep my, my vibe good. And I like awesome. to stay in the art side of it. You know, I a lot of people are, they, you know, think about the business side of it a lot. I try not to, you know, even though I fall behind on bookkeeping and stuff like that. But just because I try to think about and stay in the art side of it all mm -hmm. the time because I think that keeps you more ready to perform. Right. You know? I think that probably covers it, guys. Thank you for joining us, Jeff, um, on Creative Spaces today. And for everybody out there, please look up Jeff Bell VoiceOver, um, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, uh, all over the place um, for instructional videos and, and everything he does. And uh, thank you for being with us. And be safe and stay healthy. Thanks for having me, guys. Good to Absolutely. talk to you. Thanks again for listening to Creative Spaces. 
Before we go, please make sure you head over to Orlex.com where you'll find a ton of information about making the right choices when it comes to acoustical treatment and sound isolation for your creative space. You can also purchase Orlex products on our site as well as visit your favorite Orlex dealer. And please follow Orlex on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube.